Who of you has played Minecraft? Oh, sure. Almost everyone. I'm not surprised. So the other question is, uh, do you like the music from this game? Yeah, sure you do, as well as I am. And now I'm glad to welcome on the stage a person we could be grateful for the school sound. His name is Daniel Rosenfeld, and he is a composer and sound designer of Minecraft. Please welcome. Hello. Um, before we start this thing, was anyone with Lego? Anyone? No? Well, I'm, I'm going to put... No, you don't get it. I'm going to put this thing here, and anyone can take it. It's fine. It's ready. <laughs> okay, so hello. Uh, as you know, uh, my name is Daniel Rosenfeld. Um, uh, I've worked on Minecraft, and this is a weird name for a talk. Um, it's like a mouthful. What did they say? Creating a music on Minecraft and designing sounds. So what I actually mean with that is... I, I kind of want to like uh, tell you guys why Minecraft sounds the way it does nowadays and why it sounds kind of weird and not very normal and I don't know I just want to like just like get you like through like my life when I started working on Minecraft and like hopefully you understand why the game sounds like what like it does so first of all um, I want to show you guys this video this video is from um, 2008 um, and that was before Minecraft had any sounds or uh, like was even uh, like a game that ev anyone knew yet. It was like really early. If you played the game before, you probably realize that the game does not really sound like that at all. It sounds completely different. And the reason for that is that we had limitations. And I kind of want to tell you guys about the limitations I had in this game specifically. It's kind of interesting. So first, the biggest reason is Java sucks. Don't make games in Java. Um, don't, like Marcus keeps telling you, Java is amazing and the best. No, don't just make get unity. Um, anyway, so imagine this. This is like a visual representation of what I want to guys tell you. So like imagine you have like uh, the sound of rivers because you're standing next to the river, right? And like it has a sound that loops for like five seconds and it loops, loops over and over and again. It's fine. It's, it's a river sound. But if you uh, put like a next second sound because like you are next to trees, so of course you want birds in the forest. So you have two looping sounds at the same time. The problem with what we have in Minecraft is if you do that, it crashes. So we can't do that. <laughs> so basically, the technology of Java is still in 1996, I think. So the next problem is um, if you have like some cows, for example, like 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 imagine like this is like this is starting and this is like the ending. Like this is like a five-second thing that happens, and there's a lot of cows that like make moo 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 moo. Uh, that's fine, but the problem with the sound engine also is that if you have a lot of those sounds, and in Minecraft you like make farms and stuff like that, and like there's, there's like 50 cows in one farm, and they all moo, which is annoying, but I mean it's cows. But if they do that, the sound engine dies, and like all the sounds get cut off, and, and instead of them saying moo, they say m m m. So that's the next problem that we have, and we never really solved it until like we 
it, that is still a problem in the engine today. <laughs> and the next problem is Minecraft, um, the concept of it is that it is a um, voxel-based game that is completely procedural, which means that it's randomly generated, nothing, like we don't script anything, we don't predict anything, everything is just like, it happens because the player wants it to happen or just because the random generation tells the player that things are happening. And so, like, imagine this, you are in a cave and there's a zombie, but the zombie is not with you, the zombie is in a different room, right? So you are over there. Technically, if the zombie makes a zombie sound, you should not hear it because there's a wall. But what happens, you still hear it anyway. So you're on that wall and you hear a zombie and you just look around and there's like a wall and you're like, what is this? And so, t so the reason for that is the, like, uh, like calculating um, like, like um, what did I say, a bounces of like, uh, like this, a sound file or like a, just like a sound effect, right? Like it bounces over there. Technically, because it's a wall, you should calculate that it should stop there. That was too complicated for us because back then in 2008, Marcus and I, we were not sound programmers. I kind of know how to do that stuff nowadays, but now it's kind of too late. <laughs> so, so for us, this was too complicated and probably probably too expensive to do. So we just didn't do it. And then you can hear zombie next in the next wall, even though you shouldn't be able to. Which it's kind of bad, but it's also kind of cool because it's creepy because there's a sound that you shouldn't. Uh, anyway, um, and the next problem, like imagine this. So the zombie makes this zombie sound. And basically, the, the sound travels a little bit, like five meters or something. So there's like a circle around it. And if, if like I say, well, that sound effect is a little bit too loud. I need to make it quieter. So I make it quieter. And what happens in the engine is that the circle of the traveling of the sound also gets smaller at the same time, which makes no sense. So what I end up having to do is I have to go to my like program and render out the sound quieter than before and then put it back in the game. And that is the dirtiest way you can program sound effects in video games. Don't do that ever. Like, make them loud and put them, like, change the volume in the game itself. But, eh, whatever, Minecraft. So, next problem, music. That's quite interesting. So, Im imagine this. The player is in the savannah and there's a force next to it, but who cares? And, like, now you say, uh, well, it makes sense that the players in Savannah, you know, we can play uh, Savannah music, right? And then you just like randomly play Savannah music. But now the player goes to the forest. And because players don't really stick in one point in Minecraft, that player is in the forest really quick. And now the Savannah music is playing, and now we have to stop it. And then it's like, just play forest music. It, all of that is really clunky and like uncomfortable. And ah, uh, we, we just. <laughs> It's really complicated. Um, and here's another problem. So imagine this. So this is like a topographical view of like Minecraft thingies. Like imagine, uh, let's see if I can do this thing here. Probably not. Yeah. Laser pointer? No? Oh yeah, cool. So imagine like, uh, no, I think totally doesn't work. It just crash. Well, never mind then. I'm not going to do that done. So yeah, just imagine like on top of the green, that's like where the forest would be or like just anything that is green, like rivers and stuff like that. And the player is up there and technically we can predict that, well, it should be forest because when the game started, it was a forest. And then you like, if you go lower, uh, you see like the cave area and we assume it's a cave because that's what we had it before the game, like the player went in there. So it must be a cave. So what we could do is like play cave ambient sound effects, and that would probably make sense. And then like way below, there is probably like lava area. So why don't we just like play um, uh, like creepy lava stuff? Because that would make sense. But in actuality, because the game is whatever you make it to be, it's like up there the player made a really terrible, ugly house. So if you play jungle stuff, that wouldn't make sense anymore. And how do you predict how not to play jungle sounds anymore? And then, like, way below, the player, like, built out this, like, I don't know, wooden hut or something. And the cave sounds would technically still play because we don't actually know how to make them stop playing. <laughs> and then way below the, where the lava would be, the, I don't know, they, they made, made, like, a forest and it makes no sense. So we can't even really play those sound effects because we don't know how to make them stop. 
And then here's the next problem, more music stuff. So imagine there's an enemy in a player and, well, in Zelda they should start making battle music, right? So we could play battle music, but the problem in Minecraft is that battles are really short. So the player could just run away and it's like a two second thing. So we can't really play battle music because there's no time. Or the player could kill the enemy, but that's also just a five second thing. It's really fast in Minecraft, so why would you play battle music? Or the player might made a gigantic cave full of enemies and exploited the system to breed enemies and just kills them over and over again to like get whatever the enemy drops. Technically, we would say, well, here we have to play battle music, but we can't because obviously it's exploited and it would be really annoying if battle music would play, be playing all the time as if the player is that thing. So we can't really do battle music either. And then there's like, how, well, how about we make scripted events happening? And like, music happens if you walk into the forest. There's no scripted events. It's like all randomly generated. So we can't even do that. And then in this next problem, game players potentially play the game infinitely. So if anything I do for the sounds in the game is annoying, players are going to hate us forever. So these are all the problems I had to tackle. Oops. But uh, let's go back to 2008 before the game actually was a thing. Um, so, yeah, let's just like ignore all the bugs because I don't want to talk about them anymore. Um, so, uh, that was like when I met Marcus on a website called TickSource. It still exists, you should go there, it's a beautiful website. And we basically hung out and I was like just like the random composer guy, like posting music and I'm like, hey, please listen to me, I make music, please hire me for your game. And Marcus was basically this just, this just dude that made like terrible prototypes of not really good games and he was like, hey, look at me, I make good games, please play my games. And we basically both met and kind of liked each other and that's how we kind of got into the, like, like talking about making music for this thing, which was... I don't know, like the, the thing you could do in there is not very much. It's just randomly generated world, not very pretty. It had like a limited space of like, I don't know, 128 blocks by 128 blocks, probably more than that, but not very much. You couldn't actually go anywhere because it's just limited. Like you couldn't go infinitely like you can do now. And there were only three blocks, which is dirt, um, grass, dirty dirt, and uh, a lot of this, very much of this. And that's pretty much it. And the only other thing you can do is uh, press the, I think, the G button to spawn these guys that just jump around like idiots. And that's literally it. And Marcus asked me to make music and sound effects for that. So I want to I want to put you guys like in my mindset, like in 2008, and like um, show you the things that uh, interested me to hopefully make you figure out why Minecraft has, has this calm, weird stuff. So. This game, for example, it's called Euphoria. You can still, you can buy it on the iPad right now. It's a really good version. Um. So, um, this game, it is a very stressful uh, RTS game. Like, it is really stressful. But the thing that this game does is have this really beautiful, like, program art. And the music is really calm, like insanely calm. Like it's 10 minute songs that are the same thing over and over again. But it's like because of the music, you still don't feel like you're stressed out, even though there's like a million things dying right there. And uh, this game is amazing. I hate those guys so much. Uh, yeah, I love that game. Uh, what else? What do I have? Um, show Navigator. I don't actually know how to control the videos from here. That is not a good thing. Hey there, we're back. Oh yeah, I don't care about you. Oh, oh that's what I'm seeing, by the way. It still doesn't help me. No, I don't. I need to see that because I can't see. <laughs> Where's my mouse? Uh, that is not the button I want. That's the button I want. Uh, oh, how about I just go here with my mouse? That's that's a thing, right? Yes, yes, that's what I'm searching for. Okay, cool. Previous video. Play. Good. Ignore that guy talking. It's, it's a let's play I downloaded from YouTube. Who cares? <laughs> um, so this is Samarust. That was, uh, I think it came out in 2007, 6-ish. I don't remember entirely. But it, it's... Uh, 
I think it's a group of Czech people. Who, uh, uh. They hired this really uh, like weird IDM electronic based artist, and he made, makes this really cool soundscape. And I really love that game. So uh, directly after that, like in 2008, they announced this game, which you guys probably know. It's called Machinarium. Uh, in 2008, it didn't. It wasn't really successful. But uh, when it came out uh, on the iPad, that game made a lot of money. And it's basically the same idea, just way more polished. As you can see, the music is just like really serene and like just like generally just like comfortable. Let's see. Let's just fast forward and see what it says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all the sound effects are really cute and stuff like that. What else do they play? Um, what is this game? Oh, World of Goo! You, pro you probably know that. That game is famous. That made a lot of money. So, the, the interesting thing about World of Goo is... It is supposed to be a cute game, but most of the music in that game is kind of and like weird and like like, me me like melodramatic and the idea about that that the music in the game is that it like it was supposed to, I don't know if they kind of I don't know if they pulled it off but the music was supposed to like uh, tell the story about how this game is actually a sad sad tale of these goo balls dying it, like for me it kind of worked because I kind I think I understood it and I kind of liked, I liked the idea of music as storytelling because the game itself really didn't have any story at all. What else? Oh, so this is also a game from 2008. You can tell but because this is not an iPad. This game is called Korean Physics um, by Petri Poro. You can still get it on the iPad. It's a good game. And my music is in it also. Um, and it's, it's a very simple game, but... I think what most like people may, like kept like people kept playing it because the music was really good. Like the the visual style is not that interesting, but just because the music has this professional grade style, which was unheard of in indie games back then. Like all indie games were chip tuned basically. Not a bad thing, but it was generally always the same. Yeah, it, like the music like like it, it invites you to just to stay around and just calm, just like have fun. Great game. And then there's like uh, this, which I think this is uh, Nif uh, Niflis's game, Niklas Nygren, he's Swedish. Um, it's called Knit, K N Y T T. And this game is ugly. I, I don't care what Niflis says, this game is ugly. But Niflis is a like, guy that really cares about sound effects and music and stuff like that. Uh, where's my mouse? It's over here. Let's just fast forward. So the music is like really nice. Maybe not here. Let's just fast forward. Boop, 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 boop. Here. Yeah, as you can see, it's. I mean, the, mu the, the visuals are not really good, but they're passable at best. But just the atmosphere it creates, like like hearing the waterfalls. Like, for, like if I, when I played this game, I kind of like just played it to like hear the next song, essentially. I didn't really care what happened in the game itself. Huh. What else? What is this? Oh yeah, I guess. Nobody knows this game anymore. Um, this is a game called Blueberry Garden by Eric Swedang. It, uh, it won the, um, not, it's not so loud. It won the um, uh, Seamus McNally Grand Prize at the IGF. Which, uh, by the way, Minecraft also won. <laughs> and so the thing about this game is, it's a very simple game. You have to fly around and like collect things, but it has uh, low-quality piano recordings by some dude whose name I forgot. I don't think he makes music anymore, unfortunately. But I mean, that guy recorded the music in low quality because that's the best equipment he had. But to me, that was amazing. Like. I like the idea of low quality music that is still good. And I kind of wanted to emulate that.
Yeah, this is a weird game. <laughs> the idea is that you have to like grow plants and those plants make uh, like uh, seeds happen and those seeds make uh, berries happen and you eat the berries. It's so weird. <laughs> what else? Uh, oh, this game. Is it even playing? Yeah. And then there's like people like Cactus. Um, uh, you, could, uh, you probably know Cactus from a very famous game called Hotline Miami. But before that, he made like weird experiments like this. So this is just a simple jump and run with like some experimental stuff that you have to figure out. But the music is so serene, and I think that's also literally the only reason why I kept playing this game. It's because the music is sad, and I want to know why it is sad. And it's like really like it, like it's like plays with your expectations of what you have to do. Do I just walk right because I just walked left previously? I don't know what... I love that game. <laughs> anyway. And then there's probably the best, best example as of why I made Minecraft sound like this. This game is the ugliest of them all. It still is ugly. It's called Dwarf Fortress. Um, it is a very complex game. You can still get it. It's like they're still working on this game. And it's free. Uh, it is extremely complicated. It, it is basically The Sims Dungeon Keeper and SimCity at the same time. So basically you have dwarves and you have to like tell them like that you should work there and then they might be unhappy and then kill themselves and stuff like that. It's really crazy. But this game is ugly. <laughs> but the, the thing is, once you start that game, you hear this flamenco music, which makes kind of no sense because it's in a DOS window and you... Like back then, you never assumed that DOS Windows can make music like that happen. And that is what, what made me stick around. Like only this like harsh contrast of normal music after like ugliness. And yeah, that's kind of why I want like made the Minecraft music sound like that. Um, let's see, I have to switch thingies now. Let's see if I can make it happen. Right. So the thing about Minecraft is... Um, let me just set this up, because I have a lot of remote controlling things happen. Good. Let's see if this works. Yeah, cool. Um, so, the thing about Minecraft is, even back then, before we had players, we assumed that uh, the, the, game, the, like, the selling point of the game is that you can play it forever and ever and ever. And the thing about that is that the music needs to like, like, not be annoying at all. So what uh, we basically came up with is, how about we, uh, because we can't really predict anything, how about we just have general music that doesn't really say anything, it's maybe a little bit like uh, melancholic, but that doesn't really mean it's sad, it's just, it's just like a mood space. Like, there's another song here. Yeah, this one is especially melancholic. Um, so, but like, as we basically made the music just like randomly happen between 15 or 50, 30 minutes, just like, like for no reason at all. And what happens because of that is like players uh, do like their terrible dirt hut and it, like it's an ugly thing, but they like had an effort put into that. And like if the music just randomly happens to play because of that, like just because like they made like a dirt hut, it makes them remember that moment like more like specifically. And that's actually kind of an interesting thing that didn't, didn't even occur to us that the music could do that. Like, or, or like they like build a boat and the sun is setting and the music kicks in. And then like people keep coming up to me and tell me, well, yeah, I had this thing happening. I went to, into a dark cave and there was lava and skeletons and the music came in. It was amazing. And that was, that's pretty cool. And like the good thing about like this fairly generic music is if um, players like do something that is also very generic, they don't, they don't like really care that the music is playing. And that is a good thing because they don't complain about it being annoying. And that means people still listen to the music for at least another 200 hours until they start iTunes, I guess. And that's, I guess, that's all I need, really. Yeah, okay. But then we kind of made, like, the game change. Like, that is still 2008, 2009. We made the game change. And we had this really insane-looking creative muse mode. And we didn't have any music fitting to that. And that was kind of depressing to me because I didn't know if the, ga the music is ever going to fit again. But uh, then we made, like, this is survival mode. And it all made sense again. 
I did make music for creative mode eventually. Let's see if I can find it. It's kind of different. It, ha it has, like, has like percussion and stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Like more heavy stuff. Uh, but anyway. Um, another thing we did is uh, like get new things like this. This is the nether, which is actually a new region that you have to load into. And this is technically like a scripted moment, so I could finally actually make music that is different from the rest of the game. So, um, yeah, we have like stuff like this, if it's even playing. Yeah, just, just generally creepiness. But the thing about all of the music that I still wanted to have is that all of the music should never sound like it's attacking you. It should still be like kind of welcoming. So even if you are in hell, <laughs> the music should never like say it's creepy. You should go away. So yeah, all of the music still want, I still want it to be gen general, even if you are in the worst places. And there's even stuff like this. Let's see. I have to set this up. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Thank you. So this is uh, the end, which is basically the end of the game as we like. Like, we kind of, even though the game is infinite, potentially, we wanted to have the game to have an end. So, like, people feel like they finished the game and they can move on with their lives, but they usually never do. So, I, I, I actually, this is also my favorite song, because, like, basically, it's a 15-minute song that just sounds like this. And then eventually it does that. What else? What can I do? Um, oh yeah, I added kids, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that, and it is like kind of like just like switches between those things, and that's all it does. What else? And and it also like um, I'm gonna move, make this all quiet. And then there's also a part that plays all of the Minecraft music again, but in kind of like this retrospective way, because this is the end of the game, right? So you listen to the music again, but it's in the mood of this. This thing goes on for 15 minutes, because I calculated how long players usually takes to kill the dragon. <laughs> but yeah, this is my favorite piece from Minecraft, I think. And uh, we made, made this thing, that was my idea, I'm sorry. Um, these are jukeboxes. The idea of that is basically if players want more music, they can find it in the game. Didn't really work out because we intended to hide the records like in specific areas, but we decided to have no scripted events. So we couldn't really hide them. So the way you acquire discs is stupid. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Um, and finally, I want to show you this, guy, uh, this thing. So if we ever manage to uh, get rid of this bug, which we still have in the game, that like two looping sounds at the same time and the game crashes. If we ever gonna fix that, I can, uh, let me set this up again. I have so much setting up to do. Right, this, cool. I can uh, uh, do uh, like soundscapes that are specific for biomes. So um, let's see. Right, so imagine, like, like stuff like that. Imagine you are in a forest, you walk around and it's a nice forest, but then it becomes dark and the forest becomes like slightly more creepy. So you don't like that, so you keep walking and you end up in a jungle. And you keep walking because you don't like jungles, they're too warm. So you become, you go into a swamp? A thing? I guess that's a swamp. Yeah, that's a swamp. And you keep walking um, and it becomes really hot and messy and you are suddenly in a desert. That is not a picture of this, I just imagine it. But, yeah, it's really hard, but you finally find the river. And as you walk the river, you go to, like, you, it starts to become cold and really cold, and you are on a frozen ocean. By the way, this, those are real sounds of cracking, like, frozen oceans. Like the guy that recorded it is insane. He went to the like Antarctic and like just like put microphones there and like froze almost to death doing that. Or I don't know. Like you, you keep walking and then there's like a mushroom forest. It's kind of weird. Yeah. So if you ever manage to fix that bug, 
we can do that. And that's gonna be amazing. That's, that's pretty much it. That's like pretty much all I did for Minecraft so far. I'm still working on it. It's still, it's probably never gonna be over. I mean, Microsoft bought the thing, but they still didn't kick me out. So I guess I still have a lot of work to do. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing talk. And uh, guys, now it's time for questions. I'm sure you have them. Well, Let's show know. off hands uh, if you have a question. Any question. It doesn't really need no, to be about Minecraft no, no. because it usually I is. I don't believe they don't have. Jopar uh, Aslan, can you give me a I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, есть ли какие-то ограничения в зависимости от жанра на используемые инструменты? Okay. Uh, he asks uh, if there are any, you know, like a limitation for using some instruments depending of a game genre. Uh, so, uh, is it somehow connected the game genre and the, the instruments you use? Oh yeah. Um, so I actually didn't talk about it. Yeah, right. Um, so. The music or, or the instruments I chose, like a piano or harp or just st strings, I, I used them because back then in like uh, 2008, most indie games, and we were an indie game, they were all based around chiptune and pixelated like kind of soundy stuff. And Minecraft looks like chiptune and I hated that. So I decided to go as acoustic as possible. And also, because uh, it makes a really nice contrast be between this not very pretty game and these m the music that sounds like very br Brian Eno-ish. Yeah. У меня вот такой вот вопрос. Учитывая, что основной характеристической чертой того же Майнкрафта является элемент создания то а, не было ли идеи проиллюстрировать через муку языку не просто движение персонажа по миру, а иллюстрировать а, изменения музыки в зависимости от создаваемого объекта, от создаваемой структуры, от а, именно пополнения мира, то есть так и звук. Okay, so considering that the main, uh, one of the main things in my Minecraft is a creation mm -hmm. of some, something, the question is, do you have an idea? Было ли? Давай еще раз. Начало я уже сказала. В общем, продолжить и в системе музыку иллюстрацию изменения музыки в зависимости от создаваемого объекта. Okay, uh, didn't you have an idea to illustrate with the help of the music uh, the idea of changing the objects uh, while changing the music? So if you change the object, the music changes and so Oh yeah, connected. absolutely. Yeah, I, I wanted to have dynamic music that like changes based around what you do. The problem is still um, that we can't do that because we can't have two like sound effects at the same time, like looping sound effects at the same time. So I totally wanted to do that, but technically not possible. I don't even know if it's possible now. Я понимаю. Я скорее к тому, что если мы создаем гору, то у нас играет определенная музыка, относящаяся к эмоциональному отношению там ко мне, условно говоря. Вода имеет другой контекст музыкальный. Uh, и именно сама структура, uh, которую ты создаешь, uh, и ее размер, условно говоря, uh, визуализируется через наращивание музыки, через ее uh, тембры. Uh, okay. Я вот об этом. Uh, he meant that, uh, like, when you uh, create a mountain, uh, maybe you should uh, make some mountain music when you create water, some water music, and while the mountain grows up, the music should, uh, you know, like, uh, so the sound grows up and, yeah. and sounds like this. I, basically, like, uh, with this, for example, I'm actually doing that. Like, if they fix that, and I'm forcing them to fix it, there will be, like, if you go up to a mountain, there's going to be like wind sound effects. So yes, I'm going I'm I am doing that. Thank you. More questions? You can 
uh, ask questions uh, in Russian, Ukrainian, German. I know all of these languages, so. Hi. Uh, so let's imagine you have a task to make music for Doom or Quake or something like that. What would you do? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I really can't hear anything. How because would you make? How would you make music for games like Doom or Quake? Oh, so like like not ambient. Not ambient. Not ambient garbage. Um, I actually don't know. Um, I think I, if I would make music for Doom, it wouldn't be rock music because I'm pretty bad at guitar. So it, it would like if it would be a new Doom, like imagine like a, I like I don't know, like a space shooter. I would probably like make music like um, System Shock, stuff like that. <laughs> What do you think about catchy tunes? Is it good or bad? Uh, which what tunes? Uh, catchy tunes. When mm. you hear it and it uh, like. So. Oh no 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 no. I mean, in it, it, like it, like uh, in contrast to Minecraft, catchy tunes are always useful <laughs> because they uh, are good for marketing and advertising and like, getting people to like remember and, stuff. And uh, if they become annoying. Yeah. So there's, I think, one song called "Cat" that is kind of like people think it's catchy. I don't think so, but. Um, in Minecraft, you can't really do catchy tunes because the music needs to be generic. It's obvious, okay. But yeah, of course, catchy tunes are really important for happy games, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Skyrim, I guess, that, that is a catchy song. The Raccoon, the Raccoon. Questions, questions. Okay, it's a question from me. Oh. Okay, I think it would be interesting for everyone. Uh, as we already started to discuss good games, what's your favorite games and your favorite genres and why? Hmm. That's always a hard question for me to answer because I don't like to pick I favorites. Know. <laughs> um, in the recent years, Fez, that is a really good game. It, it's a puzzle game, but it really, it's an insane puzzle game. And maybe Thief? Uh, okay. like, like spy games, basically, and horror games. I really like horror games a lot, like Silent Hill. Yeah. Cool, cool, great, thank you. And uh, if no one has has a question, so let's give a, a, a one more question. Okay, sure. Here. Баруски скажу, а можно ли сделать для хоррор игры приятную, но в то же время ужасающую музыку, и как бы сделал это докладчик? Okay, uh, is it possible to make for a horror game the music uh, which is uh, simultaneously, uh, you know, like pleasant and uh, scary? Absolutely, that's a possibility. And How would you do this? Um, have you played PT? So PT has this part where um, the radio actually like does the radio announcer voice but it actually is it's a Swedish guy talking about a Citizen Kane thing and the music is really pleasant but it's in a room where there's a zombie up there and the, 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 the lamp is shaking as you stand there and it makes this really creepy noise that is a really good example so there, there's definitely ways you can make like pleasant things just be really uncomfortable and I love that stuff yeah Okay, please use the microphone. So you say uh, everything is possible when you are a professional, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Let's give a big round of applause to our speaker. Thank you so much.